Hello, I'm Dan. This is my son Grayson. And we're going to show you how to fix a microwave. I do appliance repair. And this is a built in, or actually under, it's kind of under the cabinet microwave. And I got this because it's actually sometimes cheaper to replace. Oops, the microwave than to fix it. So unfortunately we have some child toys in our workshop because this is a multifunctional facility. And I'll plug the microwave in here. And we're gonna try not to get shocked. Can you get him so we don't get shocked? Okay, this is repairing your microwave take three. Some common microwave problems. If you're under shelf microwave, uh, these are microwaves that may be over your range, under your cabinet. Now I have removed I have removed the microwave from under the shelf and it's sitting on my floor. Um, this is one that's actually been replaced. So the customer has donated it to me and I'm going to show you some common problems that you can fix. Fairly easy if you can get parts on these microwaves. Sometimes it's cheaper though to just replace the microwave. But we've taken the cover off. Um, there's several screw spots here on the top. It's removed all the screws on the top, the cover plate. You also have to get the screws in the back here and here. And then there's usually usually some screws underneath the microwave that once you get all these screws off, this just comes off like a shell and leaves you the microwave itself. Now the microwave itself has some basic components. It's got a vent fan for the vent hood. It has a keypad. Often those keypads go bad. Um, lots of times we also see, I don't think we can see this yet, but you have some switches, some safety switches in here. It has to know the door is shut before it starts working. Lots of times these switches go bad, and if it doesn't know the door is shut, it won't start its program. This is an over limit. This is the high voltage transformer. That is what's wrong in this unit. That powers... The magnetron tube right here, the magnetron tube, let me get my camera in a different spot so you can see it better. Alright, I've put a light over here so we can see in here a little bit better. This is the high voltage transformer. This is what powers the magnetron tube. This magnetron tube is what sends the microwave's energy down the top into the microwave. These are the two components that usually go out and if you can see here I've unplugged the magnetron tube because uh, I was called out to repair this microwave and I'm going to show you what this microwave is doing why the customer called me. Let me start it up here Alright, are you ready? Here we go. Can you hear that noise? I'm going to shut it back off. Alright, if you can hear that buzzing. That buzzing is from this high voltage transformer that has shorted out. And the reason it shorted out, the customer told me, it's because they had been boiling water that had excessive condensation going up into their microwave and they actually ran the microwave when it had condensation all up inside of it from boiling uh, I don't know if they were making some pasta but some moisture got up in here and shorted 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 this transformer out now that transformer makes high voltage to uh, power the magnetron tube because it takes like 10,000 volts to power that 
Um, it's also, if you see here, it says danger high voltage. Uh, discharge capacitor before servicing. I have it plugged in. Um, those are very high voltage. Um, unfortunately, this is a old Whirlpool, and uh, although it's a couple years old, this part is no longer available. So um, we went ahead and just replaced the unit, and he gave me this old unit to take home and throw away. So that's it. There's not whole many. There's not too many parts inside a microwave. Uh, that magnetron tube right there is fairly easy to replace. It costs about um, thirty to forty dollars for a generic one. You can get a name brand one for forty bucks. Here, hold on. I want to unplug it so I don't get shocked. All right. Now, okay. Now I've unplugged the unit. Now I know that that transformer is bad because you can hear that buzz and I have unplugged the magnetron tube. I thought it was the magnetron tube at first but with this unplugged and not having power to it we still get a shorting out humming sound so um, I know for a fact that it's that high voltage transformer. Now there's some other components that do go out although infrequently sometimes this high, high voltage capacitor does go out that's a fairly cheap item to replace and this one up here also um, but that's about it there's not a whole lot of parts to them and lots of times it's easier and cheaper to just buy a new microwave especially if it's an on-the-counter microwave it's just way cheaper to get um, a new one just to replace the whole microwave because you can get several hundred dollars in repair bills and not get um, and get a new microwave for 250 bucks. I think the guy that uh, this customer actually got another microwave for 250 dollars, and had that part been available, it would have been 100 dollars plus about 60 dollars to replace it. Now another item that's not too expensive to replace is this: is a limit switch right here. It's a high temperature limit switch. Uh, if that burns out, uh, because this is shorted out, if that burns out then you can replace I think that's about a three or four dollar part I've replaced those before let me take um, let me see if I can take this cover off and we've, I'll show you the couple door switches okay now I've removed this cover here um, as you can see there's another limit switch down here so if this thing catches on fire or shorts out this gets too hot it cuts the power to the unit um, that's just like this one up here on the side of the magnetron um, these are located on furnaces and dryers and anything that create heat and electricity. They have these limit switches on them, so if they short out or get hot, uh, if any sparks or any flame gets in there, then it cuts the power to the unit. And they're kind of located located throughout the unit. Now, um, this is the fan that circulates that actually blows, uh, circulates the air in the microwave. There's another fan on top and this is just the vent for um, the oven. Now this is what I wanted to show you. I'm trying not to tear this apart too much because if I find a power transformer I could actually replace this microwave. But there's the door switch. If You can see the black, the white, red, and red wire. There's usually a top door switch and if I can show you down in there you kinda it's out of focus it's back there in the back it's that round half round moon shape um, and this one looks like this unit well, some microwaves have I'm trying to get a good shot on it it's that little part at the end of my finger but it's back in there that little half moon looking thing is the bottom door latch there's two door latches now this microwave has only one door switch itself I've seen microwaves that have a door switch up here and a door switch at the bottom and what this simply does is it's like the lid switch on your dryer or the lid switch on your uh, washing machine it just tells it tells the microwave that the door is shut and latched and it allows it to operate so this magnetron tube will not turn on unless that door switch itself says 
that it has a closed circuit. If that has a closed circuit, then that knows the door shut and it lets the power go through everything. So um, those door switches aren't very much. However, they can be a pain to get back in there and get them out. Um, on this unit, uh, see there's a couple, there's a screw here. I'd say take that screw and that screw out and the door switch will come out. And then you get to it from the back. Uh, the only other major component on this is the actual control board itself. Um, these control boards here usually range. They can be about $100, uh, sometimes $50 to $200 for the control board itself. So lots of times when those go bad, unless you can find them at a uh, parts store, maybe like an old part junkyard. I have an old parts supplier, and that's where I'm hoping to get this at. Um, he said if I brought this in for $25, he might be able to find me one because this part's no longer avail available from the manufacturer. So if this control, control board goes bad, um, then, you know, throw the unit out because it's pretty cheap to buy a new one. So the way, the common problems to diagnose a microwave is this. If it shuts and you're able, now I've got this unplugged because I don't want to get shocked. But if the door shuts, this lights up. Let me um, get some of this stuff back. I'm just going to plug it in one more time so that you can hear the noise. And I'm going to try to find a power supply for this so that I can replace it, refix this. But this is generally how to diagnose your microwave. If this keypad works and everything lights up fine and you can hear it beeping and all the buttons work, then it's usually not this com this computer keyboard because the computer keyboard, when it goes bad, the screen will stop working. Uh, when you push the start button, you know, it, it doesn't do anything. But this one, you know, if I push start, it all, all clicks. So that tells me the computer itself is working in this unit so if, if this doesn't if you can't get none of the buttons to react then usually it's that thing now I have seen times and it's kinda nasty but I've been in people's homes where it's got roaches actually have gotten back inside of this pad and stopped this from working whoops let me fix my light here so um, sometimes if just one certain button, if one certain button doesn't work, then um, I have seen that because for some reason roaches do like microwaves, roaches do like electronics. So I've seen where uh, roaches have gotten behind here. But uh, but for the most part, if all these buttons, you know, most of the buttons work, then you can usually tell the computer's fine. So if uh, you dial in a time and push start, And it actually starts. Now you can hear that noise that it's making. Like I said, hear that noise from that power supply. I can actually tell because of the noise, because of this being unplugged, that that's what's the matter with it. But I know it is not the door switches because when I push start, it starts. It does something anyway. So if it's the door switch, a lot of times when you push start, nothing will happen. Just like if you leave the door open and I push whatever and I push start, here, nothing's happened because it thinks the door's open. So if the door switch is bad, you push start, it'll just go like that, even with the door shut because it doesn't know the door's open. Now, if you push start and it starts and it doesn't make a funny noise, but it just doesn't heat at all, then there's a good chance that it's just this magnetron tube. If it starts, sounds normal, everything sounds fine, you know, you hear the fan come on, then 99% of the time it's this magnetron tube or it could be this uh, limit switch. And one way you can test that is you can test these leads. I'm going to start the camera and unplug this one more time. 
Now one of the ways you can test the high voltage transformer is you can you can start it and you can test and see if you have power at these leads which these leads just go on the side of the magnetron tube. There's one there. I hope you don't see me get shocked because this does hold some power after a while. But the one lead goes up. It goes up here to the capacitor which goes there. So if you have power here this is good. If you don't have power at these leads, then your power supply is bad. So um, we hope that you uh, got some information out of this, and I hope that it's not too much useless babbling. So uh, this has been uh, How to Fix from www.614appliancerepair.com. Um, if you have any questions, be more than happy to try to answer them uh, on any of your appliance repair needs. You can email me at ohiofixer at gmail.com. Once again, that is ohiofixer at gmail.com. And unfortunately, I have to go because my phone is uh, just ringing and ringing. So I must be important tonight. Thank you, and, and thank you for watching.